Hi, I'm Ken Oaks with Oaks Day Lilies. Our nursery is located in East Tennessee, which is the home of the University of Tennessee here at Knoxville. And they have a great display gardens on the Ag Campus down here. And we're a corporate sponsor of the gardens. And so last summer, we uh, partnered with them to provide them some daylilies to plant a uh, daylily display garden. Now the gardens here, if you happen to be in the area, are really worth a stop by. You'll see lots of folks when you come by uh, taking pictures and drawing pictures and you name it. Uh, and they have a lot of uh, established plantings as well as things that they're trialing. So it's, uh, you know, it's worth a visit. So last year when I was uh, picking out which varieties we wanted to uh, give for the display garden, I picked out uh, some of my favorites and I tried to get a mix of different colors and uh, bloom shapes and sizes and seasons and heights. It's one of the great things about daylilies. They come in pretty much every color except blue and of course a wide range of um, colors and shapes and sizes like I mentioned. There's daylilies as small as a couple inches in diameter, all the way up to, you're gonna see one of the biggest ones we grow, Webster's Pink Wonder, which is over a foot across. And then there's uh, ones with long, thin petals, like the legs of a spider, and more traditional round ones, and then uh, fluffy doubles. And so I mixed some of all of those in the, uh, in the plants that we uh, donated to the gardens. So uh, the reason I shot the intro and everything up to this point up where it was a little bit quieter is because there's a highway just on the other side of these trees. So I apologize in advance for the uh, ambient noise you're gonna get from that. But you know, behind me here's the bed and it's just a long bed along the edge of a walkway. Uh, and I'll just let you get a shot of that. And I'm gonna you know, uh, show you each individual variety that we included in the bed. So as you know, daylilies like full sun, uh, you know, six hours a day or more is what we recommend. And so this bed that uh, we donated the daylilies for is in full sun. Uh, so it's a great spot for it right along this uh, walkway. I was gonna show you here's the first variety. I mentioned this one earlier as being probably the largest daylily bloom that we grow. It's listed at 13 inches. And this is the variety Webster's Pink Wonder. And you can see, I'm not gonna pedal off of that one there. See, look, 13 inches, look how big that is. And this makes a great show. They're held tall scapes about you know, 36 inches tall or so. So this is definitely gonna be an eye catcher in the garden. And if you plant this one, you probably guarantee that you'll have a bigger day lily than your neighbor does. All right, so this is the variety Bass Gibson. Uh, this is a really fancy bloom. You see, look at this gorgeous golden edge, you know, kind of uh, got teeth around the edge on there. Kind of a, what do you call that? Peachy pastel, you know, with some gold and orange and pink in there. Uh, you know, about uh, 30 inches or so. So it's a variety Bass Gibson. This is a variety that is near and dear to my heart. Uh, my grandfather introduced this one. Uh, the name is Red Volunteer. He was a big uh, Tennessee fan, so volunteer for the Tennessee Volunteers. Uh, and this has been a really popular variety. It's uh, from the American Daily Society. It won an award of merit and was also selected as an All-American Daylily. Uh, so uh, this one has grown well around the country. We still get lots of pictures of this one coming in from our customers. This is Red Volunteer. Uh, blooms are about six, seven inches in diameter. It held pretty tall. Looks really tall today, taller than I remember, but it's listed at 32 to 36, so uh, Red Volunteer. All right, moving along. This is the variety Drop Dead Gorgeous, which I think is aptly named. It's a nice uh, soft yellow. And again, look at that ruffled edge around there. Just a fancy uh, bloom there, really eye-catching. Man, it looks great today. So uh, what, about five, six inch blooms held on a little bit shorter scapes. It's probably uh, 27 inches or so. So I mentioned the dahlias come in pretty much every color except blue. This is a really nice uh, purple and I love this color. This has uh, uh, become one of uh, our favorites the last few years. Look at that dark purple and then it's got a lighter sort of a silvery lavender purple halo around this wet white and, and uh, creamy yellow green center. Uh, just a lot going on in this bloom. This is Claudine's Charm. I don't think I mentioned the name of it. Claudine's Charm is the name of this one. Big blooms, about six inches, had a little bit shorter, about you know, 26, 27 inch scapes. And I mentioned daylilies come in different shapes. This is uh, a double daylily. This is the, is the variety Mount Helena. Uh, and I love this one, yellow with this darker uh, maroon burgundy center around it. So you see it's a double because it's got the extra petals there in the middle. So uh, blooms are about you know, four to five inches in diameter, held on you know, about 27, 30 inch scapes. 
So this is another of our introductions, the variety Yellow Explosion. Uh, nice yellow color. I don't know if you can see or not. It's got a, an interesting seersucker texture to the blooms. You can see that, uh, that in there. Uh, we named it Yellow Explosion because it just has lots of blooms. You can see all these buds that are just getting ready to start. So when it gets going, it's just a mass of color, you know, an explosion of color, as it were. So this is Yellow Explosion. Blooms about four or five inches in diameter. Held relatively uh, a little bit shorter, 24 inches or so, I'd say. So this is the variety Mary's Gold. This one does just what you want a daylily to do. Lots of big blooms, big bright blooms. You're going to see this one across the garden. It's going to have like a solid carpet of blooms all over the top. Relatively tall. It's about, uh, I'd say 36 inches or so. And look at these, just, I mean, every bloom is just perfect. About six inches in diameter, bright gold color. Uh, this variety Mary's Gold. So I'm personally partial to the color orange. So this is one of my favorite varieties, the variety Heavenly Dragonfire. I love the great big bright orange blooms, uh, about seven inches in diameter, and they're held on tall scapes, so you don't have to bend over to see this one. Uh, about 36 inches at least tall. Uh, it just makes a massive color when it gets to going, and uh, this is, I really like this one, Heavenly Dragonfire. So this is the variety, Pandora's Treasure. It's got a great uh, combination of colors. This dark, darker color in the center is what they call an eye zone. So it's got sort of this, uh, you know, light, uh, you know, I don't know, creamy, uh, color with the darker maroon burgundy purple eye zone and then the edge that matches around there so a lot going on in this bloom you know I'd mentioned that this one you know if you see behind me it's sort of wrapping up its season because it blooms a little bit earlier so that's something else to consider as you plant daylilies in your garden if you plant some that are earlier like this and then some like the yellow explosion which I showed you a minute ago has lots of blooms still to open you get a longer bloom season just combining some earlies and some later ones like that so here's another variety with a really big bloom. Apparently I'm partial to varieties with big blooms, but uh, this is variety All-American Chief. Great big red bloom for the big yellow center. I would point out that here's a traditional bloom and most of them are probably gonna look like this. See, with, you know, three petals, three sepals. We've got a couple blooms on this one here today that have extra, see extra petals to them. So see there's four of each. Um, I don't know if this one does that uh, often or not, if it just happens to be today. Uh, they call that, uh, polymerous. I'm not sure exactly how you say that, but when it's got extra petals and I can't guarantee this will ever happen in your garden, but when it does happen, it's kind of a cool look. So the next one we've got is the variety Purdy Rich and it's another fancy bloom, got a lot going on. Look at this soft rosy pink color and a yellow gold edge around it. Um, nice round blooms, about five, six inches in diameter, and a little bit shorter, 24 to 27 inches or so, I would say. So, pretty rich. So, here's another later season bloomer, and also another double. This is the variety Big Kiss. Uh, really nice, light cream blooms with this rosy pink uh, center, eye zone in the center. You see a double because it's got the extra petals, you know, you see the different shape there. Held relatively tall, about 32 inches or so, I'd say. Uh, and like I mentioned, the late season bloomer, it's just now getting started. See all these blooms that's got to go? So it's a good way to extend your season. So the variety Big Kiss. So just a couple varieties to go. This is a, a really nice earlier season bloomer called Wonder of It All. It's a nice cream with a, a nice golden edge around there, yellow gold edge. Uh, and so this is, uh, you know, kind of getting towards the end of its first bloom season. But it's really cool, if you notice this here, this is what's called rebloom. So see this scape is just now coming up and I see another one back here, I don't know if you can see it or not. But so it's first scapes here, you can kind of tell they're kind of getting ready to wrap up their bloom season, but those are gonna come on and bloom here next week or the week after. So rebloom's a great trait. You know, you can search for that on our website as well, which varieties are listed as being rebloomers. And uh, you know, you're not gonna get as much bloom on the rebloom, but if you get any, it's better than nothing. All right, so the last variety is another one that's near and dear to my heart and appropriate for the University of Tennessee display gardens because this is the variety Orange Balls, which again, this was hybridized by my grandfather and named in honor of the uh, Tennessee Balls. So big, uh, deep orange blooms, uh, about seven inches in diameter or so and held about 36 inches, uh, 30, 36 inches tall. So uh, Orange Balls, great way to add some uh, big orange spirit to your garden.
So while we're here at the gardens, uh, we thought we'd take a walk around because we get a lot of folks who ask, what are good uh, possible companion plants to go along with your daylilies? And the display gardens have a lot of different things planted. So we're gonna take a walk around and show you some possibilities. So uh, a good summer companion plant, uh, cone flowers, echinaceas, those are great full sun, hardy perennials. So those are good choice plant with your daylilies. And then below us here, we've got a couple of different kinds. I don't know if you can see them all of uh, low growing sedums. Uh, sedums again are another tough, uh, you know, easy to grow uh, full sun perennials. So those are good things to mix in amongst your daylilies as well. All right, so here's a couple other ideas for uh, companion plants to your daylilies. We've got, uh, here behind me, we've got a Rose of Sharon. Uh, and then uh, we've got, um, what else we got here? Oh, a uh, butterfly bush over there. Those are a good summer, uh, normally hardy, kind of where you live. Um, and then again, some sedums at the bottom. So here's a couple more uh, potential companion plants for your daylilies. Uh, I'm not 100% sure. I think this is a nepeta, a cat mint. Uh, it could be a lantana. But um, I know that I have some uh, cat mint planted at the house and it blooms about this time. It's a different variety. Uh, but I like this color, how it blends with, this is a color probably you're not going to find a whole lot in daylilies. So it's a good way to get it in a companion plant and matches really well with this uh, nice yellow color. I think this is the variety El Desperado. It's not labeled, but certainly looks like it. And then uh, behind us here are some cannas. And uh, those are another great way, uh, you know, another good companion possibility for your daylilies. So here we've got some uh, lantanas uh, planted behind some purple daylilies. Um, again, another good companion plant, well, you know, typically low growing, the lantanas are. Uh, and, you know, colors that blend really well with this nice purple. So we've got a lot of possible companion plants in this bed here. You know, this is a, uh, looks like a Shasta daisy, uh, Lucanthemum, I think is the name of that one. Uh, and then uh, behind us, we've got uh, just getting ready to start. There's some Rebecca, some Black Eyed Susans. Those are a good opportunity. There's another uh, butterfly bush up there in the corner. And let's see, I don't know what this is, but uh, it's nice, whatever it is. You know what it is, let us know. Uh, there's some more cone flowers over there. And then behind them is some Gallardia. I think that's a harp flower, I think is the name of that. Back on the back up there, you can see some true lilies. And then over there, we've got uh, some hydrangeas and uh, some foliage, I think, on a, on a um, uh, false indigo. Uh, um, yeah, so there's a bunch of different, uh, that of course blooms earlier in the year, so it's just the foliage now, but it's a nice look in the garden. All right, so here's a nice planting that's got what I think is the variety Trollata in the middle, with sort of this uh, dusky uh, violet purple and a darker purple center to it. There you go darker purple eye zone around a yellow throat. And then they've got uh, back behind us, this looks like some Russian sage. I think Krovsky, I think is the name on that one. Uh, for a nice lavender color, they pulled from this. And then here in the front is uh, some Coreopsis. So the yellow, you know, pulling from the yellow throat. So that's a cool look, a different foliage on that, you know, for a different look. And then over here is some more lantanas. And again, this, is, this one's got a little bit of white and then the yellow to pull from the yellow throat. So it's really cool how they've uh, mixed all this stuff together. So I hope you've enjoyed this tour of the UT uh, display gardens, uh, looking at the bed of daylilies we provided last summer, and then also some possible uh, companion planting ideas. Uh, you know, we've got a lot of videos about daylilies. If you'd like to check out uh, some others, uh, we did one about uh, how to landscape with daylilies. That's been a popular one. You might want to check that out. Uh, we've been growing daylilies for over 40 years. If you have any questions or comments, we'd love to hear it. Just put them below, or you can check out all of our contact information on the website. Thanks for watching.